Okay, this is the TLX config menu. So this is running on an Intel NUC at the moment, but the interface looks the same. Same look and feel on all devices, the Raspberry Pi, the Intel NUC, RePC. When it first boots up, if you haven't configured it, you'll have this configuration menu option here. So let's uh, see, we've got a session button to start, um, start a new session. We can click here on show session output to see what the output of the previous session was. We can configure things. That's if the administrator has not set a password on here. If the administrator has set a password, then user can't configure anything unless they know what the password is. Uh, we have a shutdown button to shut down the device and a reboot button. So let's click on configure. And you can see we have a number of tabs here. We'll start off with the first one, the device tab. So um, it shows the firmware type. In this case, this is a TLX NUC32, which is our Intel small form factor version of TLX OS. The device's serial numbers in here, firmware version 440 is the latest firmware. The um, Linux kernel version. The ThinLynx firmware maintenance version, the MAC address, the IP address, and the license status. So currently this has got a trial license that expires on the 23rd of August 2017. So this is a 60-day uh, free trial. It hasn't been licensed yet. This configuration menu can be used to configure almost all the options that you can also configure with the then next management software, except you can only do one device at a time, obviously. But if you if you uh, want to configure um, options locally, you can do it here. Okay, now we're going to configure the the displays. So the default options clone and a screensaver timeout of 20 minutes is set as the default. If you want to disable the screen saver, just set this to zero. Now let's say in a situation that we have um, more than one display, two displays, we click on extend desktop and you'll notice these buttons are activated. There's three different outputs that we support. The device I'm using at the moment only has two outputs. It doesn't matter what they are, whether they're VGA or HDMI or or some other type of output, we just call them output 1, output 2, output 3. So output 1, in positions none, uh, landscape mode and the resolutions auto. There is a drop down list of re resolutions you can set here. So output 2, you can decide where you want it, to the right of, Output one, left of it, above, below. So I want it to the right of a referent. I put here output one. So output two is right of output one. They're both in landscape mode, but you can have portrait if you prefer, which is useful for um, digital signage. Both resolutions are set to auto. The third output is set to none. And if I click on save now, uh, the, the displays we set up. And also, we recommend that after you, you change the resolution or change the displays, you reboot the device. So you've got to click on save settings, then reboot. So I'll click on cancel because I'm happy the way the display is set on this at the moment. So we go back to the configure screen. And... Um, the next tab is servers. Well, this is where you can set the TMS server discover, discovery method. So the default auto, which means we use DHCP option flags to point to the location of the TMS server. If there's no option flags, then we check for a static assignment to the location of the TMS server. And then we use UDP broadcasts if neither of those are set. So we default the uh, static 
values here to a host name of TMS. So you'd normally uh, enter your own host name here for the name of the system that the uh, TMS software is running on. And um, in this case, because we've got a default of TMS, if you set your DNS C name up to point TMS to the TMS server, you don't need to configure anything here because it's already configured. So the options are auto, DHCP, static, or UDP broadcast. UDP broadcast uh, only works on the one subnet. So if you've got your device located on a different subnet or somewhere else in the world, you have to either um, have DHCP option flag set or static assignment. We can set the time server here. So we've got um, at the moment Australia Melbourne, but I could enter uh, any choice of time zones here. Um, but we'll just leave that as it is. And the time server, we default to this Debian pool NTP all time server. In some situations, you'll have to enter the name of your local time server uh, to get the correct time. Another option we've got down here, which I've already got selected and configured, is enable Pixie server. So firstly, um, you need to put a subnet in here. So the network I've got here is 192.168.1.0. The net mask 255.255.255.0. The DHCP range start, this is the DHCP address I want the Pixie server to hand out, is uh, 192.168.1.247 and DHCP range in 192.168.1.249. Normally you could set this to um, you know, uh, 50 to 200 or 250, but I'm only uh, handing out two um, IP addresses using this. I've got it set here. There's two choices, provisioning or diskless clients. If I set it to provisioning, which I have now, any other Intel small form factor device that's Pixie booted on the same network that I've configured here will have TLX OS installed on it. So this is a way that you can do mass installs quickly. Once you've configured just one device with TLX OS, you can come and set these Pixie server variables here. And then anything in Pixie boot will be installed in less than five minutes with TLX OS. If I change this selection to diskless clients instead, any device that you Pixie boot will be a diskless thin client, it'll boot its operating system from this device here and you don't require a disk at all. And also down here we've got respond to Pixie boot requests only. We, we only want this DHCP server that's built into this to respond to devices that are asking for a Pixie boot. So that's very useful. Uh, I'll click cancel. I'll go back to configure again. Have a look at proxies. So this is to set up a um, RDS gateway, remote desktop, uh, when Microsoft remote desktop services gateway. And um, we, we won't configure that. It's just the host name, user ID, password, and confirmed password. Then the network configuration is wired. Um, we're adding 8021X shortly, so there'll be another box here aligned with wired that enables you to configure that or we have wireless and then the different connection methods so there's DHCP which is the default or we can choose DHCP with DNS override which allows you to enter DNS names into these two boxes here and that would be used in the case that your DHCP server is not providing DNS information so you need to manually set it here or we can set a static IP and then fill out the uh, various uh, boxes here. Um, protocol for wireless. You need um, 
to select one of them here. The normal one for most people would be WPA2 personal, so you'd select this one here. But we do have none, WIP, WPA2 personal, WPA2 enterprise. And if you're using the management server to configure this instead of the local configuration menu, we also have WPA2 enterprise certificate. So that's that section, I'll just hit cancel, go back to configure, application, this is the mode that we want it to start in. So at the moment I'll configure it to be Citrix HDX and I'll put in the storefront name here, zendesktopthinlinks.com. If I put in the command line arguments box the name of the desktop that I want to launch, instead of going to the storefront and displaying all the icons for different applications and desktops the actual desktop in this command line arguments box will be launched instead I can set auto login by entering a username, domain, password and then confirm the password and I can select auto reconnect which will um, reconnect to the Citrix session after logging out. This is quite useful if you don't use auto login because when you log out you just get an empty dialog box that you've got to enter your username at domain and your password before you can log in. So for people that are sharing one system it's very useful that a user can log out and the next user has an empty dialog box to enter their username at the domain they're in. In my case that's john at test, the domain's test, and then the password. We can select any of these protocols uh, on this tab. So Citrix HDX SSH, Remote Desktop Protocol for Microsoft. Uh, VNC X11, which is a Linux uh, remote desktop protocol. Spice, that's Red Hat Spice protocol for remote desktops. NX is No Machine, another remote desktop protocol. Web, which is the local Chromium web browser. TCM, Thin Links Connection Manager, which is uh, under development. Telnet, which is an old protocol but still used at times. TN327, which is IBM's mainframe terminal client. Horizon VMware, that's uh, VMware's Horizon client with H.264 Blast support. Performance Monitor, that's N1, which is a, a monitor for uh, very useful for monitoring things such as CPU load network, bandwidth, usage, memory and so on. Use the defined bespoke mode. We have customers that want to install their own application they need a way of um, launching it. So they can do that with user defined bespoke mode. Digital signage um, where you can play JPEG images, uh, videos or web content either local web content or remote including a kiosk mode in our digital signage mode media players the Linux uh, media player application so click on cancel there and come back